we have some gorgeous eye candy, a solar storm fizzle, and some massive far side eruptions. These stories and more are in this week's Spotlight. Space weather this week has given us a lot of eye candy. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we've been watching a number of regions, including 3917, 3924, and 3920. All of these have been giving us little pops and whistles in terms of solar flares, but not any super big eruptions. In fact, region 3920 on the 14th fires off this kind of stealthy solar storm. It's really hard to see, but it begins to destabilize this filament, this big, long, worm-like filament, as you can see here. When we take a look in coronagraphs for this eruption, though, what we see is a very big but slow-moving halo, and this thing is actually Earth-directed. So we are watching this thing kind of going, well, it's going to be really slow eruption. But then, region 3924, as it continues its little activity, it then pops off what looks like could be a solar storm eruption. You see this here. It lights up this whole segment in here. But when we look in coronagraphs, we don't really see anything. So we think it's probably a failed solar storm launch. Still, however, it begins to really destabilize this filament and then whoosh, do you see that? It launches, but it also lights up these old regions again. So there's this whole huge thing by the 15th that launches partially earth directed with a lot of material. So when we take a look in coronagraphs, you can see this massive partial halo. And we weren't even sure this thing was going to be earth directed at all. But remember, there was a solar storm in front of that. So believe it or not, when this actually launched, we ended up getting a solar storm, but you might not have even noticed. We had the solar storm hit yesterday, but it ended up being very much a fizzle because the magnetic field was oriented the wrong way. So sadly, even though it was a really strong solar storm, there wasn't much aurora that was produced by it. Still, if you saw this back here, did you see that big blast? Let me back it up a little bit. You can watch it. Whoosh. Do you see that back and forth? Watch this thing kind of evacuate out like that. Boom, right there. That was a big far-sided eruption. Look at this monster. This thing is a very intense solar storm, likely from old regions 3905 and 06 that we'll be talking about here coming up shortly. But after that blast, things really quieted down for a bit. We did have another failed filament launch right here. You can see this. This was definitely a fizzle. We basically had to wait for region 3905. You can watch it right on the Boom, right there on the east limb. That fires off a gorgeous eruption, and that causes a secondary eruption. When we look in coronagraphs, sadly, neither of these are Earth-directed solar storms. So, ugh, once again, gorgeous eye candy, but nothing Earth-directed for aurora photographers. However, as we continue watching the far side, we had this massive solar storm eruption. Look at this huge halo. This thing was so incredibly large. As you can see, it made a gorgeous eruption clear in the C3 field of view, way far out. This shock and, uh, and the speed of the solar storm is incredibly fast. Thank goodness it was far-sighted, but it sure makes us wonder what's coming around the bend because it does look, as we see these regions rotating into view now, we do expect to see more big solar flares and big solar storms coming in this next week. So be sure to keep your eyes on the sun. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, we can no longer use Stereo A imagery to look at the far side of the sun because Stereo A is looking at the same side of the sun as we are. So in this case, we're using the NISP gong imagery of about two weeks ago to get an idea of what type of active regions are still lurking on the sun's far side. And as we set this in motion, you can immediately see region 3905 and 06. These were big flare players the last rotation we saw them, and they are definitely causing havoc on the sun's far side now. In fact, these regions are the ones that fired at least one of those big far side eruptions, and they are going to be rotating back into Earth view here over the next couple days. But they're not the only players. As you can see, we've got several others that we'll be seeing on the on the far side as we take a look at the Gong uh, Helioseismology Far Sided Monitor. Now, you can see as we set this in motion, here's these regions as they were beginning to rotate to the sun's far side. And what we're looking for on the far side, which is this region in here, we're looking for these white dots to appear. 
So you can watch Region 3905 definitely surviving their far side passage, but also Region 3912 and 3910. In fact, as we take a look, if I back this up just a little bit, you can see a place here where we've got Region 3912 right there. Look at this. We definitely have a big region underneath 3912. In fact, this might be the region that caused that massive far side halo, that beautiful symmetric thing that we saw. So in about a week's time, we're going to see this region rotate back into Earth view. And along with region 3905 and 06, this means we're going to have a big chance for big, uh, maybe possibly X-class flares again, as well as a lot of solar flux and radio noise. And of course, the chance for really big Earth-directed solar storms. So Aurora photographers and everyone else, man, all eyes need to be on the sun over this next week. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the third quarter phase on our way to a new moon. And by the 25th, the moon will only be about 27% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, well, now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are now calming down from that solar storm fizzle and that filament launch that is missing Earth right now, but it is giving us some fast solar wind. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting uh, unsettled conditions with up to about a 30% chance of minor storms over the next day or two. Then by the weekend, things should be pretty much settled down. And then we're kind of in hurry up and wait mode because we're not expecting all that much. We don't have any more fast solar wind on the way. We are kind of in the wait mode to see whether or not we're going to get any big solar storms because those new regions rotate rotating into Earth view. At mid-latitudes, the outlook is about the same. We're expecting unsettled conditions, even with this fast solar wind, with about a 25% chance of active conditions over the next day or two. Then things really begin to quiet down. But again, these forecasts may not last all that long because we do have those big solar storm producers, and they could change this forecast very quickly for aurora photographers. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting well in the triple digits. In fact, by the end of the week, we could be up into the 200s when it comes to solar flux. And this is because of those returning regions, 3905, 06, and possibly 3912, that could be very big flare players. So expect to see that solar flux rise. We're also sitting at moderate noise on the dayside radio bands, but that could also rise as we move into the next upcoming week. NOAA's giving us about a 40% chance of M-class flares. This is at the R1 to R2 level radio blackout level. And and also about a 5% chance of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout. But again, this is likely going to rise over this next week as those bigger flare players rotate into Earth view. So everybody hold on to your hats because it could get pretty noisy. Now, switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, everything is in the green this week when it comes to radiation storms. We're sitting at the D1 normal range. This is at flight level 360 for you aviators. It's also the S0 quiet range for everyone else. Right now, NOAA is giving us only about a 5% chance of a radiation storm at the S1 to S2 level, and this is likely going to be true for the rest of this week. And this is because we don't really have any big flare players in Earth view, and even when those returning regions rotate into Earth view, and eh, not quite sure they're going to give us all that much while they're on the east limb. But expect over next week this risk to rise quite a bit as those regions start rotating closer to center disk. So you aviators, and this does include flight crew and you frequent flyers, pay attention to those ICAO advisories in the next few days and over this next week because these conditions likely are going to change. So the space weather this week is full of a lot of eye candy. We have had a lot of eruptions that have just haven't been Earth directed, but we do have the chance for that to change here over this next week as new regions rotate into Earth view from the sun's far side, and they have been launching some whoppers. So Aurora photographers, don't worry about the fizzle that we've been having. Just kind of sit tight here over this next week, and we could get some bigger storms on the way. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, 
enjoy the quiet right now on the dayside radio bands because this is likely going to change over this next week as these big regions rotate back into earth view and we start getting the big flares like big radio blackouts again so just expect that the noise on the bands is going to rise over the next few days and into next week and just kind of hunker down and now you gps users well the same kind of thing enjoy the relative quiet right now because things are likely going to change in about a week and as long right now as long as you're uh, vigilant near dawn and near dusk your gps reception at least over the next few days should be pretty top-notch i'm tamitha scove the space weather woman thank you for watching